grab a drink and sit back because this is one episode of D&D 20 you do not want to miss. The party enters to meet with this high elf and then he introduces himself as the royal emissary Elisar Telendal from the high elf capital city of Aladril. He has been sent on a royal mission to search for a half-elf that has entered the woods. Sai steps forward and demands what the meaning of this is. Elisar continues by saying that he is indeed the half-elf that he has been sent to look for and that he is to accompany Elisar to Aladril in the morning. Sai refuses saying that he has nothing to do with any high elf business. Elisar cockily smirks and replies with, you don't have a choice in the matter. Tyler not being able to simply fight his way out of this, tries to weasel his companion safety out of it. If I am the person that you are looking for, you have no need of my companions. Sai says. Elisar replies saying that he was told to bring anyone in the company of the half-elf. With one look from Okat and Lorvir, Sai knows that regardless of whether he had won that battle, they would have gone with him. Lorvir heads back to Edmund's room and tries to convince him one last time to stay with the party, secretly in hopes to keep the orb with them. But Edmund, one track minded and devastatingly loyal, sticks to his mission. He is to head out to Brinziri in the morning when the party departs for Aladril. She spends the night with him. I don't know why I added that, but notes. Tylee wakes up early and says goodbye to his druid compatriots. He tries one last time to charm Caliph and is rewarded by a kiss on the cheek. Lorvir finds Siler by the pool and after seeing him bid farewell to Eleneth, approaches. They start to converse and Lorvir mentions how unusual it is for the High Elves to be willing to let strangers enter their secretive capital. Siler brushes it off, saying it is nothing more than a mistake that they have the wrong person. He does, however, bring up a strange point and asks Lorivir to protect Mokot. Lorivir is confused in where this is coming from. Siler confesses that he has a feeling that once he enters the city, he will not be able to leave and that Mokot is the closest thing to family he has. Lorivir takes hold of Sai saying that she can be trusted. She asks what the orb has shown him and that if his strange behavior is because of that, Sai gives in. He tells her that he saw himself calling the elves to war and them answering his call. Lorivir shakes her head, confirming that he is not that type of person and if by chance that were to happen, she would stop him. Heading off, Sai replies, If that time comes, I might not want to be stopped. The emissary is waiting for them, and he is aided by a squire. He introduces himself as Mirandus, and he refers to Elisar as Lord Emissary. As the party departs to Aladril, Morandus is acting quite peculiar. It's obvious he has never seen anything or anyone else besides High Elves and asks strange questions which the party, well, Ty Leaf and Lorivir and Mokot anyway, are quick to answer and to even poke fun of. When evening falls, the group settles down and the High Elves, only needing four hours, are awake before the party that morning. 
On the second day of travel, thanks to bluff rolls, Mokot, Lorvier, and Tyleaf have convinced the young Mirandus that gnomes are born from eggs, and that the human touch is deadly to high elves. As the day wears on, the party is met by a band of elves. The leader, Volan, strange for an elf name, announces that they are to be their escort. Siler notices Alisar's confusion and is confirmed that he was not expecting an escort. Elisar asks on whose order this was given. A royal one, they replied. Sai grips his sword and asks Morandus one more time if he recognizes them. He does not, and without another word, Sai charges. After the battle commences, Tai Leaf and Dodo stabilize two of the unconscious attackers for questioning. But upon regaining consciousness, they speak the elven word failure and burst into flames. Sai takes a hold of Elisar and bashes him into a tree, accusing him of the setup. Elisar goes on to say that Sai means nothing to him, and yet he risks his life to defend him in battle. Tyleaf and Lorvir search the other bodies and find that they are carrying a sigil of a crescent moon. Elisar informs them that it is the house of Valinar, the royal household. Sai lets Elisar go, and the emissary decides to take them into a secret way. They arrive at the tree, and once Elisar speaks an ancient elven phrase, opens a tunnel. They reach a second door after traveling for a while, and after a different word is uttered, the door opens into a room. They are now in House Telendal. Elisar bids the party to stay in the house and make themselves at home, while he sends out feelers to gather information to garner the safety of the group inside the city. During his absence, Tyleaf and Lorivir, quite upset with Elisar, make mischief in his house, tilting paintings, tables, books. Sai and Mokot, however, head to the library, and while Mokot looks at books of ancient artifacts, Sai finds the history of House Valinar. He finds Erethion Valinar, the present king, and his son Emelion Valinar, though little is mentioned of the prince. Not finding any information, he wants more and tries to find Elisar's study. It is locked. He hunts around the house to track down Lorivir to get her to pick the lock, which she does with ease. She asks what this is about, and not answering, Siler finds what he is looking for, a journal. Sai flips through the pages, and he comes across what he is looking for, an account of a feast held by the Sultan of Almazir. The Crown Prince and Elisar attended. This dates back about 30 years. Though bland, there was a slight mention of the granddaughter, the prince having a connection. Skipping forward through the pages, Sai reaches another peculiar entry. Fifteen years later, Elisar recounts of a meeting with a prince, and he is given a boy. He is to arrange a secret passage to the west. Sai racks his mind and remembers a man similar to Elisar which he thought of foundly, unlike this Elisar, who he thinks of as a pompous ass. Cranky and tired, Sai leaves the study without a word, leaving Lorvir and Tyleaf quite confused. In the morning, Elisar returns and assures the party that they are safe. The attack was made outside of the city. They should not make such an attempt within the walls of the city. He bids them explore since he says that they will not likely see Aladril in their lifetime. He says that the prince is busy but will see them soon. As is their fashion, Mokot and Dodo, along with Tyleaf, go to the marketplace while Lorivir finds a mage with sending, a sort of telepathic hologram telegraph. She writes, My sweet Edmund, are you close to Biari? We are safe in Aladril. Seeing the prince soon, you'd love it here. I miss you. In the marketplace, Dodo hears his name being called out. Turning, he sees his cousin Rolo there. The party had met Rolo briefly 
in Brenziri. Confused, he asked how he, he came by being in Aladril. I have no clue, Rollo replies. Rollo's expression darkens, however, and in a serious tone, he says something to Dodo in Dwarven. Dodo turns back to Mokot and Tyleaf, saying that he has a matter to attend to, and bids them farewell. Puzzled, Mokot and Tyleaf continue on their way. Sai chooses to stay with Elisar, though. He tells Elisar that he is to see the prince alone, and to mention nothing of it to his comrades when they return. When the time comes, Morandis leads him to the side entrance of the royal palace tree, the tree palace, and they soon come to a door which Morandis opens for him, but says that this is as far as he is able to go. Sai steps into the throne room and the walls are decorated with a sky blue, the royal color. And a single man stands at the far end of the room with his back turned. Do you trust yourself alone with an armed stranger? Sai asks, making his way into the room. Do I have a reason not to trust you? Replies. Came a reply. Do you have a reason to? Sai shoots back. I wanted to see you with my own eyes, my son. As the figure turns, it is Arethion Valinir, the crown prince. His eyes are golden as he look, uh, stares at Sai. Why now, after all these years? Sai asked coolly. I've always watched you and protected you. Just like you protected my mother, just like you saved her from her death. Sai accuses bitterly. Even the crown prince of the High Elves has their limitations, Arethion replies, looking pained at the thought. I brought you here to warn you, there is darkness in our blood. The words linger in the room. With a snarl and a cold gaze, Sai turns his heel, shooting back a reply. Then I consider myself warned as he leaves the throne room. Meanwhile, Lord Vere receives a word from Edmund. As she sees his ghostly appearance manifest from the spell of sending, he replies, Back in Brenziri, I with Yanis, safeguarded well. Be careful in Aladril, return soon. Warn the elves, war is coming. Stay safe, my love. Is Siler who he says he is? What are dwarves doing in Aladril? And what of Edmund's message? But now is the time that you guys have been waiting for. Leave your questions, fun, and creative comments down below. And who knows, maybe our DM might just turn them into reality. But that wraps up another episode of D&D 20, and I'll see you guys next time. She spends the night with him. I don't know why I added that, but notes.